market. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President of AP Volvo and CEO of the Volvo Group, Mr. Olof Persson. Thank you uh, so very much, and it's of course a pleasure for me being here. And what I would like to do those 20 minutes is actually to describe for you a process, a process that I personally went through and the company went through after I took over as the CEO two years ago. But we are the Volvo Group, which is actually the, one of the largest producers of trucks, buses, and construction equipment machines. We, to put it in retrospect, over the last 20 or 10 years, actually, we have produced more than uh, 2 million buses, uh, sorry, trucks, uh, 500,000 construction equipment machines, and around and above 100,000 buses. And I would like to, the, for the record as well, say we not only have, only have produced them, we also sold them very successfully around the world. <laughs> How do you steer? How do you actually get an organization of 115,000 people to really grasp what it is you want to do, and really grasp how to move forward in the new way that we wanted to achieve. And this is what I would like to describe for you, and hopefully, in all humbleness, that you will pick up some good ideas. Some of these are, of course, quite straightforward. The first thing was to get a vision in place. What is it that we want to do? What is it that we want to be long term? And coming back to the previous speaker here, we are living in an environment which is very much focused on sustainability. So we took the vision and decided the vision to become the world leader in sustainable transport solutions. And that sounded all nice, but we also find out when we discuss that with all our colleagues, what is sustainable? Please define to me what is sustainable. And how do you relate that to the different brands? Brand in India, brand in in Europe, brand in US. So we actually found the answer from UN. So we actually have taken the UN definition of sustainability, meaning that environmental sustainability, yes, but also social and economical sustainability is part of our definition of sustainability. I also said very clearly, I don't want to hear about the three-year strategy. This is a 36-month strategy. And that is a heck of a difference when you have of a mental shift. 36 months means that something has to go on each and every month in order to reach the three-year targets. So we put all this together. We put the operational system. We had the targets there. And then, of course, we come to the next big challenge, how to communicate. How to communicate and how to really drive this down in a company with 115,000 people. And then we had a choice. We could do, which is very common, and that is that you present the strategy on an overall level. Almost, I wouldn't say fluffy, but it's, you know, key focus area, we need to be more profitable, we need to expand into that, and we need to capture markets. The drawback with that is that you leave a lot of interpretation further down in the organization. We cannot set com company confidential and send it out to 115,000 people. That doesn't work. We want to make sure that everyone could talk about the strategy, felt engaged about the strategy, and also contributed to the strategy. Well, the answer was quite simple. Let's make it public. So exactly a year ago, 25th of September, we called for a capital market day. 100 analysts, journalists, um, share owners were there. And we basically, in great detail, laid out not only the strategy, but we also said to the market, this is what we want to achieve, and when we have achieved it, not if, when we have achieved it, this will be the implication on our profitability. You can never, ever create a strategy for 115,000 people who are all doing the wave for that strategy. But what you can and what you should, as a manager, and what they can expect from you, is that they should understand the context, then they should understand why. They then don't have to agree on everything. I think we should go for this one. It's, I, it's, I think one. the picture is better. There, okay, so. then we take this one. Um, a well-known quote goes, 
a mediocre strategy well executed is better than a great strategy poorly executed. Tell us, how did you personally learn this lesson? Well, th that's, a, that's a given, of course. And, and um, I think what I did in my young age, when I am a younger age, when I got my first uh, management, management job was that um, I believed I had all the answers. I could move very f fast. And I did. And then I looked back and asked the organization, are you behind me? Yes, they said, we are behind you, but very far behind you. When you hit the seat uh, as CEO, uh, you said that this, uh, I know this strategy had been on your mind for quite some time. And I'm just thinking with that huge responsibility and so many employees, how did you know it was the right one? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. Gut feeling, no. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was, we tested it a lot. I mean, I mean the, the, the time spent, and, and I'm, I'm a, a true believer of, of someone who says it's better to take 10 fast decisions and get eight right, and then fix the other two than dwell on one forever. Uh, I, I live on that philosophy in order to keep the speed, but with one big exception, and that is when you define your strategy. You have to take the time. We worked nine months only to get the definition of the focus area. We worked another three, four months really in parallel also to get the actions. We tested it for two months. How is the interlink? Can you do that target without jeopardize that target? How, how does this move around? So, so it, it is something that we have tested and we have discussed it and so on and so forth. And then when you go out and roll it out, you know that it's um, at least not completely wrong. What would you say is the most important lesson you have learned as CEO? Well, I, I'm still a CEO, so I'm, I'm hopefully to get a <laughs> lot of lessons. So I, I think one lesson is that, and, and that I learned not at this job, but I, I think it's every, any, any young manager would, would, um, would ambitions manager would, would underwrite, is that the first job you get, very often get a little bit off hand, uh, if you look back on it, that you're a little bit too ambitious, that you want to basically change the world from whatever position you are, and you're moving a little bit too fast. And with the management positions, you, you start to realize that, that you need to really be humble, you need to learn the organization, you need to learn the dynamic in the organization, and once you have done that, then you can start to apply your own ideas in an environment that actually gets traction and things get done. So you need to back down a little bit first and then move forward. Coming in uh, as a parachuter kind of approach, uh, at least for me, is, is, is not uh, something. I, I must admit, I did that in my first management job. I flew in with a parachute and here I come and boom, I got some serious discussions with my boss and I revert <laughs> back. I, I'm a learning creature. I'm a learning <laughs> creature. So.